Hello guys, welcome to this session. So guys, in this session, we will talk about how to implement machine learning using scikit-learn and AWS SageMaker. So today we will start machine learning from regression. So let's talk about simple linear regression, which is a form of machine learning. So in simple linear regression, we predict the value of a of one variable y based on another variable y means we have to predict the continuous value as the predicted output so on the basis of given value of x we can uh, we have to predict the value of y why simple because uh, here we have to find the relationship between two variables only okay means we will have only one feature here we will have one feature and one target column and why linear because here we have to find the linear relationship between two variables okay? so when the dependent variable increases or decreases the dependent variable increases or decreases in a linear fashion so in this image you can see we have some data points here right and uh, in linear regression we build a linear relationship between a feature and a target column or we can say between an independent variable and a dependent variable. So let's take an example where we will have only one feature and one target column. Okay. Uh, before that, let's uh, discuss about this equation. Uh, y i equal to b naught plus b one x i, where y is the dependent variable, b naught is the constant or intercept, and b one is the slope or coefficient and x here is the independent variable so on the basis of given data we have to find the value of b naught and b1 right b naught and b1 then after in the future if we get any new value of x then we can predict the value of y next is loss function what loss function we will use here so in uh, in this regression here we will use mean squared error Right. A loss function in machine learning is a measure of how accurately your model, your ML model is able to predict the un, uh, is able to predict the expected outcome. Mean squared error is the simplest and most common loss function. To calculate MSC, we can take the difference between the model prediction and the actual output, or we can say ground truth and square it and find the average across whole data set. And this is the formula here. 1 by n, n is the number of samples, summation, i equal to 1 till n, and y i means actual value for the ith sample, means uh, actual output for the ith sample, and y hat i means predicted output for the same ith sample. Okay, uh, I'll show you in an example uh, how we can find this uh, mean squared error. Okay, so I'm going to share a whiteboard screen. Suppose we have data and we have a column here, let's say experience and salary. We have two columns here. We have one feature, which is here experience. And uh, sorry, uh, yes, we have one feature, which is here experience, let's say X. And uh, another column is salary, which is a target column or Y right i would say here this is a target column suppose here we have some values let's say if someone has experience 2.5 and uh, his salary is let's say 5k and uh, someone has experience 3 and his salary is let's say 7k right and so on so whatever input and output data we have we have to find the values of the parameters parameters means uh, if we have this equation y equal to mx plus b where m is the coefficient and b is the intercept okay so the value of m and b we have to find okay okay now suppose here uh, these are the data points we have these data points here and on the basis of m and b here we can find a regression line right on the basis of m and b we can find a regression line so let's say this is our actual y right and on the basis of m and b we can also find here predicted output means y hat means y hat right and uh, with the help of y hat we can draw this line so this is a regression line 
now you can see the uh, suppose we have okay, if we take this data point so the difference between this data point and and this regression line this is called error this is called or we can say residual error right residual error right and uh, we can just write it as actual output ith samples both this is the ith sample minus predicted output y hat i and then we can take the square similarly we can find the errors for the others so if you want to find the error for each data point we can write it as summation i equal to one till n and it's the number of samples then y i minus y hat i and then we can take the square here and then one minus n okay so this is a formula of mean squared error so in regression mean squared error we can use to measure the performance of a regression model on unseen data points right or test data points okay now let's go back to the slide what is next we have what is training versus test data so before implementing machine learning we have to split our data into trade and test so train data we will use to train our model and test data we will use to measure the performance of a trained model on some unseen data points or we can say test data points so data set is divided into 75 percent for training and 25 percent for testing this is the default ratio we can also change this ratio right we can also take a 80 percent for training and rest 20 percent for testing or 70 percent for training and 30 percent for testing so training set we use for model training and testing set we use for testing train model and make sure that testing data set has never been seen by a train model before means uh, in the test set uh, we can keep the samples that are unseen for the model okay so if we have this data so, so 75 percent data we can use for training and rest 25 percent data we can use for testing next we will uh, here we have a machine learning library that is scikit-learn so first we will see how to implement regression using scikit-learn and then we will see how to implement regression using AWSH maker. So scikit-learn is a free machine learning, free and open source machine learning library developed for Python. Scikit-learn offer several algorithms for classification, regression, and clustering. Se several famous models are included, uh, included such as support vector machine, random forest, decision tree, gradient boosting, and k-image. We also have some other. Scikit-learn can be efficiently used in data pre-processing. We can also do data pre-processing, like uh, we can do feature scaling, label encoding, one-hot encoding, right? data splitting. Right? So these are the things that we can do uh, using scikit-learn. So scikit-learn is a machine learning library in Python. So now here uh, we will do a project and uh, through this project we will learn how to implement a simple linear regression. Suppose you have been hired as a consultant to a major auto, automotive manufacturer and you have been asked to, uh, uh, you have been tasked to develop a model to predict the impact of increasing the vehicle horsepower on fuel economy and you gather the following data set so you have some data set here you can see you have horsepower which uh, which is a given input here and you have to find the field economy as the predicted value so this is your target column and this is our input column right so independent variable x vehicle horsepower and dependent variable y means target column which is here mpg right or we can say fuel economy okay so let's see how we can implement this how we can build a model for this data set so i'm going to upload a sheet here okay and also data i need to upload data also fuel economy okay let me open this file okay, just wait for a few minutes so if we have only one feature we can use equation we can use equation for simple linear regression that is uh, simple linear regression equation so you can see here 
Oh, let's find some other. So y equal to a plus b into x. Okay, instead of this, yes, this one. Y equal to b zero plus b one into x one. So this is a simple equation, right? When we have only one input feature. So b zero is a constant term here, and b one is a coefficient. So b zero and b one, these are the parameters. The value of these parameters we get after model training. Right? Get a new one. Let's try to get a new one here. Corner Python three. Okay, here we have to select. Uh, we have to set the kernel here, corner Python 3. Okay, let me just restart and clear output. Uh, so first here we have to import some necessary libraries here, pandas, numpy, map. Okay. Then we can read the data here. Okay, so pd read csv and the csv file name fuel economy.csv. And uh, now we will get the data into this variable, you can see. We have this is our input and this is our target. So we have horsepower of a vacuum of this one. So the fuel economy is this one. Right? So we need to build a model right, using this data set right, that can predict the fuel economy on the basis of given horsepower of a vacuum. Next, we can display some five, first five record or first six record. So we have this input value and this is the corresponding output. So you can see in the target column, we have values. Here we have continuous values in the output, right? I mean to say, uh, we don't have any predefined categories or labels, right? Or classes in the target column. We have just single value, right? A single float value in the output. We can also display last five record here using tail method. Next, we can uh, call a describe method. If you want to display uh, some information about uh, these columns like mean, median, standard deviation, Q1, Q2, Q3. So we can call this method here, describe. So count then mean, you can see standard deviation is 62, minimum value is 50, and uh, Q1, 174. Q2, 218, Q3, 251, and maximum value is 350. Then in, uh, in the fuel economy, so this is our target column, and this is your input feature. Instead of shape here, we want to, okay, let's display the number of samples here. So here in this data, we have 100 samples and two columns. If you want to check missing values, so missing values, we can check using DF. Here, data frame, which is here fuel economy, fuel economy underscore df dot is null. Okay, and this output we can pass into the original data frame. Sorry, uh, throughout this, we can call some method, not this one. We can call some method here. Yes, you can see we have zero missing value. We have zero missing value. Okay. Next here, uh, we can store our input column into a variable x and target column into a variable y. So in x, we can store our input feature horsepower, and into variable y, we can store fuel economy. Means this is your target column. So input date, input column is horsepower, and target column is fuel economy. So before training a model, we always try to store all the features, right? To store all the features into a separate variable, right? And then we try to store our target column into a, another variable. So now in X, we have this column, and in Y, we have this column. So this is a very simple data set, right? So uh, we have a, uh, we also have, uh, sorry, uh, we, uh, we already have a very clean data set. Right, so in this data, there is no need to perform any data pre-processing task. But if we have uh, any uh, categorical column or if we have some missing values, right, uh, then we can do here some data pre-processing. But here we have a simple data set, right? So here next we will uh, split the data into train and test. So uh, we can import this uh, function here, train task split from sklearn 
dot model selection import train task split and uh, we can import this function and then uh, we can call this function we can pass x comma y we can mention the test size here and we will get the four things so this function we use to split the data into train and test so uh, if you call this function we will get four things first train input then test input then train output then test output and then we will train our model so after splitting the data the next thing is we will train our model so the shape is train shape 75 comma 1. you can see in the training set we have 75 samples in the test set we have 25 samples next we will import this algorithm so scikit learn is a python library is a uh, machine learning library in python so after installing it uh, we can import it as a sklearn now you can see from sklearn.linear model import linear regression and this is how we can import a linear regression model and then uh, we can initialize the model and then we can call fit method here so in the fit method uh, we always pass our training data so in training data we have x train and y so whenever we call fit method it means we want to train our model using given data set next if you want to display the coefficient and intercept so we can do that right so model dot coef coefficient for uh, for coefficient and for intercept model dot is regressor dot intercept underscore so if you want to do prediction on test data point manually you can use these two values and right? you can use these two values next we will test our model we will call here method predict right and we can, uh, here we'll pass x test you can see here predicted output so these output we are getting on the basis of value of m and b y test you can see here so these are the predicted output and these are the actual output you can see the actual output is 24.35 and the predicted output is 24.38 similarly for the next sample the actual output 27.41 and the predicted output 26.81 next uh, okay now here we, uh, also we want to get some accuracy score right so here we can use r2 score so r2 score is basically a evaluation model evaluation technique in regression right so from sklearn dot matrices import r2 score and if you want to get mean squared error that we have just seen in the slide so we can also find here mean squared error this one mean squared error so let's find first r2 score so for r2 score here we need actual output and predicted output so we want to get r2 score for test data so here if you want to see the documentation just press shift and tap so y true comma y pred y true means actual output that we have in y test and then we can pass here then we need to pass here variable y pred so we can pass here variable y pred you can see r2 score we are getting 0.86 so we always get this value between 0 and 1 if we are getting value 1 or close to 1 it means our model performing well on the given data points if we are getting this score close to 0 means we have a very uh, you can say uh, we have a model that is not performing well on the given data points and this value can also be negative it means uh, we will have a very worst model okay so if we have value that is equal to one or close to one it means our model is performing well on the given data point here we can also find a mean squared error. so mean squared error for mean squared error we can pass here y test comma and then y grid so this is mean squared error 2.5 so if we get this value as close to zero right it means our model is performing well next here we want to display the regression line right we want to display the regression line first for the train data and next for the test data okay. so let's display a regression line for the train data first 
So PLT will scatter we can use. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me first display the train data. This is our train data. So if you want to see model performance on the basis of our regression line, right? Then uh, we can first we have, we have to display the data, and then we can do using a scatter function. We can pass here x train, y train, color. You can set the label here. Next, we want to draw a regression line. So regression line here we can find on the basis of given input here, right, and on the basis of predicted output. So here we can use plot function and x train comma regressor dot predict. Here we are passing x train, right? X train. Now using this plot function, we can display a line here. You can see this red line, right? So this is a regression line, and this line here we are getting on the basis of m and b, right? Yeah, right? Coefficient and intercept. Next here. Uh, Next, here we want to display the model performance on the test data. So we can use PLT to the scatter, then x test, comma y test, and color equal to gray. Right? We can call plot function here, and we can pass x test, comma regressor, and dot predict. And here we can pass our test input data. Then same. Now we can set the y label, x label. We can set the title here, and we can display the graph. So you can see model performance is good because all uh, because uh, most of the data points are very close to this line. I mean, most of the data points are very close to this line. But this data point you can see is far from this line. Right? This data point is far from this. Okay. So now here, uh, if we have any data point, right? Uh, let's say if we take any random value. Right, and uh, next we want to make prediction on that random value. So this is random value, 240 horsepower. Some random value we can take, and then we can make prediction here. Right, so regressor dot predict. We can pass this random value, and we will get the output here. We are getting. You can see we are getting fuel economy here, 21. Right. So this is uh, so this regressor. This is our trained model. Right, so this is how we can work on a simple linear regression using scikit-learn. So if we talk about major steps here, that uh, so major steps. So first we can import or we can uh, use here uh, load data set, load data set, and then prepare data. But this data set that we have just seen, it was very easy data set right so that's why there is no need to prepare the data so the second step is prepare the data next step is initialize model initialize model next step is train model on training data and next uh, we can evaluate model we can evaluate model on some unseen data unseen data or you can say test data right and train model on train data after that uh, if our model is good then we can make some prediction then we can make some prediction so these are the major steps here right load data set prepare data initialize model train model on the train data evaluate model on unseen data and then making prediction next uh, we will talk about Linear learner, which is an algorithm of AWS Sage Maker linear learner. We also have some other algorithm here. We also have some other algorithms, but uh, first algorithm in Sage Maker that we discuss that is linear learner. So after this, uh, next uh, let's discuss about. SageMaker linear learner algorithm. Okay. So linear learner is a supervised learning algorithm that is used to fit a line to the training data in the case of regression. But we can also do a classification that we will discuss in the further class. Okay. So using linear learner algorithm, we can do regression as well as classification. So in the case of regression, there may be a 
continuous output but uh, yes in the case of regression the output will be a continuous value we can also do here binary classification means there will be only two classes zero and one and we can also do here multi class classification where we will have more than two classes so output tables must be from zero to number of classes minus one right so using linear learner we can do classification and regression so here we will talk about regression right so you can see here what problem type so we can solve by linear learner so we can solve here logistic regression means binary classification problem in the case of binary classification we will have two classes yes or no right and uh, labels here zero and one and if you talk about examples so let's see uh, so let's take is this email spam or not so email spam filtering is a binary classification example similarly we have other examples here is this transaction fraudulent fraudulent or not so we have two classes here is crime likely or not we have two classes so these are the examples of binary classification we can also do multi class classification where we will have more than two classes for example is this item a book movie or a toy right and uh, the main thing here we can also do here regression so answer continuous numeric values question means in the case of regression we will have continuous value in the output suppose if we want to predict the sales of a company right predict the sales of a company so that will be a regression problem now let's go ahead if we talk about some important parameters here that we will use here in the linear learner we have here uh, a predictor type epochs feature dimension l1 regularization wd means l2 reg regularization value optimizer and then learning rate loss mini best size number of models but if we talk about some important hyperparameters such as predictor type here we have to mention binary classifier or multi class classifier or regression number of epochs means number of passes over the data default value uh, here, uh, in this hyperparameter we are fixing feature dimension means number of features in the input data l1 means a uh, regularization value w d is the l2 regularization value optimizer means what optimization algorithm we want to use here right so we have some optimization algorithms like scd adam rms prop and others but i think default value is adam optimizer so optimization algorithm we use to find the best value of m and b by minimizing the loss next we have learning rate which shows the step size for an for the optimizer learning rate means how quickly we want to move to the minimum point of a loss function next we have loss what loss function we want to use it depends on the problem type that uh, that we are going to solve if we have a regression problem okay, so we can use mean squared error or mean absolute error if we have binary classification problem we can use logistic loss function or log loss function if we have multi class classification we can use softmax loss function right and if we don't provide any value so the default value is i think here logistic we can mention the minimum batch size the number of samples per batch number of models here right okay so let's take an example how we can implement linear learner so i need to Okay, we need to set the kernel here say in python 3 so we have same data set right but this time here we will use linear learner algorithm so first here we have to import some necessary libraries okay guys just one minute so we can import here pandas numpy cborn here uh, we will not use cborn here we will use matplotlib boto3 and sagemaker 
I think uh, there is uh, Boto 3, uh, basically uh, SDK, AWS SDK, SDK for Python. So if you want to use any resource of AWS using Python script, then you can use Boto 3. And then we can import here SageMaker Python library. Okay, so we have the same data here. So when we implement linear learner, the first thing uh, we have to set the target column as the first column in the CSV file. Right? So we will save our data into CSV file in which the first column will be a target column. So pd.concate df metv then df.drop. Okay, here target column is fuel economy. So here we, here we can pass fuel economy. This is our target column. So always we have to set the first column as the target column here. Okay, and uh, okay, instead of this line, we can do one thing. The goal is we have to set target column, which is a full economy as the first column. So df dot uh, df dot column name, you can just copy this, paste it here. Okay, and uh, here we'll pass data frames in uh, in the form of list okay here we pass another data frame means uh, the column that we want to use as the features so df this d or we can do df drop we can drop the target column here so we can pass here list this axis we can pass here one because we want to drop a column here. Let's run this line. So we are getting error. We have to close uh, this. Okay. We have to put here a square bracket. There is some error. There is some problem. The data. Okay. Let me check. We don't concate. Okay. Here we have to pass also x is equal to 1. Now you can see the target column now is our first column. And this is the feature. Now this data we can save into a CSV file. So the shape is 100 comma uh, two. Next we will split the data. Then we will save the data into CSV file. So final data, test size. Here we are passing a data frame. See, here we are passing a data frame. If we pass data frame, so the uh, train data or test data, we will also get as the data frame. So here we will get the training underscore data set. And this is our validation data set or test data set. Next here, we can store the data in the form of CSV file. So data set, training data set to CSV, then file name. Index equal to false means uh, we don't want to save the indexing in the file, right? Header equal to false means we don't want to save the column name in the file, right? And the same thing we can do for the validation data set to CSV file name index equal to false header equal to false. Then, uh, then we have to upload the data into S3 bucket. So SageMaker dot session, and uh, here first we can create a session here. So SCWS, which is a session variable here, and then we can call a method here upload underscore data. So file name, right? What file we want to upload into S3 bucket and then bucket name. And then this is the folder name. It's a folder name. So let's create a bucket here. The bucket name here, we want housing data demo. So let's create a bucket here, three bucket. Okay, uh, let me just remove, let's try, just one minute. Okay, let me just delete this one also. So let's create a bucket here. So here we can pass a bucket name, housing, or we can take a linear RG demo. Hey, this is a bucket name, linear uh, hyphen RG hyphen demo. And then reason name, that will be same. And the rest of the thing will be same here. Okay, next click on this create bucket. Okay, now you can see this bucket has created and now we can upload the data into this bucket so just go inside this bucket and uh, 
click on this upload uh not upload here uh we can create a subfolder inside this bucket and the subfolder name is check the subfolder name is okay subfolder name is my data so we will store our train and test data into this subfolder my data okay let's run this so session object not upload data this is the file name that you want to upload into a bucket this is the bucket name oh sorry bucket name here we can take linear let me check okay linear reg demo yes linear reg demo this is the bucket name linear reg demo and the uh, subfolder name that is same my data we have this created here my data and if we run this we are getting an error here okay let me check oh uh, i think that we are getting an access denied error. okay so uh this will cover in the next session right so in the next session we will see how to uh, upload the data into the bucket right and how to train our linear learner model right so in the next session we will see how to train a linear learner model okay guys so i think it is enough for today's session right so let's wind up this class and let's meet in the next one thank you guys